Well hello people of Defend Their House and welcome back to another one of mine and Jameson's long talky review roundup discussions. We are talking about the month of May. We're a little April. bit behind. April, god damn it. Oh yeah, we're in May. We're yeah. talking about April. There we go. <laughs> we're, we're quite far behind because the main topic of the video, God of War, came out on the back end of April. And we're also going to be talking about a strange thing some arts and crafts nintendo <laughs> labo which is going to be an interesting chat it's so, going to be an I interesting don't... me filming footage for as well like I oh yeah don't know what i'm gonna do yeah good luck with that uh we review we got our copy of god of war from sony interactive entertainment of america so god of war what an interesting thing I, yeah. <laughs> before we dive in, I think an interesting thing about God of War is we didn't really understand what the hell this game was for a long time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we knew it was a reinvention. When was that E3? That was two, almost two years ago now. They, they did that. 20, well, 2016. Okay. Uh, they did that E3 reveal, and they were like, oh, it looks very different mm -hmm. and a little bit like The Last of Us, which is not a bad yeah. thing. Um but yeah, they, I remember they did that reveal and it was like, wow, this looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about this, though. <laughs> and then yeah. they just sort of went quiet and then they put another trailer out like, you know, a year later and it didn't show anything. And then and so for like 18 months, I was kind of annoyed because they were like, God of War, are you excited? I'm like, I don't even know what this game is. And then about a month before the game came out, I was like, oh, I'm really glad I don't know what this game is. Yeah. And then when I started playing it, I realized that is one of the best parts of it, is not knowing what it is. They did a crazy job of disguising the scope of this game. Yes. I think the only stuff I had seen was footage of the wood stuff, where you're hunting with Atreus right at the beginning, yeah. and then the world serpent, which was kind of like the big thing in the trailer. Like, look, this big, big god-like thing still in the game. And I, th yeah. I that's all I'd seen visually of the game. I went back and looked at the demo and a couple of the trailers, and they pretty limit, like, they limit what they showed in the trailers to probably the first, like, everything before Alfheim, you know, before mm -hmm. you go, and that's like the first five hours of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, so I think I wanted to say this before we actually get into it. I, if you haven't played God of War and you want to play God of War and it like it, it looks interesting and exciting and something that you'll get to down the road, um, I would just say you should not listen and just you know if you're gonna play it, don't like the less you know about it, the better I think. Yes. Uh, I'm glad I didn't know many things about it going in. Many even just like small things. And I think if you have the intention of playing it at some point, um, play it because it's very, very good. And mm -hmm. a large part of the fun of it is discovering all the weird, crazy stuff that's in the game. Uh, well, maybe not weird and crazy, but it's just, it's not at all what I expected it to be. And it's nice to be no, surprised. Um, not so. At all. So yeah, that was that was what I wanted to, wanted to say. Go play it and then come back and listen maybe, or... You know, and if you really don't want it, or if you really are unsure about it, then obviously listen, because there's a lot to talk about. But uh, yeah, I don't really know how to break it down. I think, hmm, I think it's kind of might actually make sense to just sort of go through it, like almost like you we did when we discovered it, because it starts off pretty slow. Yeah, and it portrays itself as a mostly linear story game, a very cinematic Sony-esque first party looking story yeah. game. Yeah, like and the I first, I don't know, five, f almost five hours, I would say. F f three three to five hours are super duper linear. Uh, yeah. And, and not bad, but it was just sort of slow and deliberate and there's lots of cutscenes and story stuff and, and you're going down pretty tight corridors. Uh... It kind of sells itself as a Naughty Dog-esque experience out the door. It's super yeah. high quality. It looks amazing. Uh, there's no cutscenes, really. There are cutscenes, but it's all seamless. Yes. No camera cuts in the entire no, game. Technically no camera cuts, yeah. And, cool. and then there's like little, like two hours in, there's like that little... Uh, there's like the little sort of chasm that if you go down to, there's a, a like a level five enemy or something. And oh, you're yeah. like... 
oh, I can't fight this guy. And and, and it sort of hints at like, oh, wait, there's enemy levels in this game? What? Mm. I need better loot? Uh, and it's sort of... Yeah, it almost sells itself a little short because the first like three to five hours are, are quite good. They're very well made. I found it pretty engaging. But my first play session with it, basically the whole first day that I was playing it, I was like, oh, this seems this seems good. Yeah. Nothing's take like nothing is too amazing so far, but it seems like a pretty good you know Naughty Dog esque game. Uh, and then it slowly starts to open up and open up and open up, and once yeah. it opens up, it really starts to shine. I think. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> don't know, I don't know how to form this conversation because I, I want to skip forward <sighs> to the open stuff, but I feel like I feel like we should maybe start with the combat before. We okay. get into the open stuff because the okay. open world stuff is like my favorite part. Interesting. Yes. The op- okay. Yeah. The open world stuff or the hub stuff. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll come back to that. Uh, the combat is the main thing you, know, you do, obviously, because it's a video game, and so you have to kill yeah. things every t- twenty seconds. And um, it's important you get that right when it comes to hand to hand combat because Jesus, some melee combat can be bad. Yeah. And also. I don't- from software has kind of ruled the melee combat genre for a while. Yeah. Hack and slash games haven't really emerged for the last They're, couple of years. Yeah, they've sort of they were I think pretty popular for like the you know first ten years of the last you know the two thousands. I would say they certainly had their place, like the original God of War games, like you know mm-hmm. from two thousand two to two thousand ten or whatever. But then from software, yeah, they sort of for the last like eight or so years, it's been. People combat-wise have wanted more slower. Maybe not. I wouldn't call Blood or you know the Souls games slow, but they're a little more deliberate combat-wise. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't really. I have a. I wouldn't say I like a lot of melee combat in games. Uh, <laughs> you know, the Batman Arkham series has great combat. Um, Bloodborne. I I mo- I had a pretty good time with the Bloodborne combat, but a lot of the times. Combat melee combat just doesn't do anything for me because it doesn't uh, it doesn't have the right weighty feel to it. I think is is playing God of War maybe realize I think that's what I like about a melee combat system is it it's all about how it feels and the mm. feedback and the weight and how it like if it makes me feel like it makes it's just got like a cool feeling to it, good moves, stuff like that. Um, I tend to like it, and I would say yeah. for God of God of War's combat. Uh, I really like God of War's combat. <laughs> yeah. I think playing God of War's combat is is really good, but I wouldn't rate the systems and playing God of War like up the leaderboard of hand-to-hand combat games, but I do think that it may be the best hand-to-hand combat from a f- kinetic, powerful feeling. It just feels heavy, deliberate, and vicious and it just looks amazing and the game's pretty long by the way oh yeah 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 the game's like 30 to 40 to 50 hours depending on what you do and how much mm-hmm. you complete and it's never not like really fun to yeah. just mash on these enemies that that was one of the major things that i i so i did a hundred i did a high a hundred percent of this game platinum did everything and that was the major thing that kept me playing was enjoying the combat and i would say actually that it's probably especially in the last like 20 hours or so where i had really found the the rhythm got the moves that i really like i would say it's probably the most i've enjoyed in melee combat in any yeah to date. i can see yeah. that i can definitely see that and yeah, like vicious is probably the best word for it. It's <laughs> there's a lot of moves that are just like Kratos is screaming and just brutalizing everyone around. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's there's like there's a lot. Like most parts of this game, there's a lot going on with the combat. Uh yeah, surprising amount. Like there are different stances there are stance changes. That yeah, you can I didn't do. even get into that stuff. Yeah, like that, when you tell me that there's a melee combat, like a Sony first party game that, with melee combat that has stance changes, like, I, if you told me that before this, I would have said, no, you're you're trolling me. Like, they didn't, <laughs> they're not going to put stance changes into a God of War game. Yeah. But they totally do. I mean, they're pretty, they're relatively simple. But, um, 
that skill tree or the skill trees, um, there, there's a lot going on in those skill trees. And then you have uh, light and heavy, like sort of, they're called runic attacks, but they're like uh, special moves, basically that recharge mm-hmm. there. And those are, there's what, maybe like 10 of each. Uh, yeah. I didn't do a great weapon. job of experimenting mm. because some of them are, look visually amazing. Like I look at like the preview and I'm like, ooh, I should definitely try this one out. And then I look at what I have equipped and it's like three times better in terms of like uh, damage and stun and frost. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't really have much of an incentive to give this a go except to look at it. What's the one... The one that I used for almost the entire game it was like uh, Fury of the Frost Giants or something. It's the one where you just ground pound, ground pound the axe yeah. over and over again. The ground pound yeah. is so good. That one is extremely strong. Uh, I think for the I, light I, one, I used the Spinny Boy one where he spins around a lot. I like that one. Oh, yeah. That one's pretty good as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely experimented. I tried to experiment as much as possible, but it was hard to not keep coming back to the same two because there's two two or three that are like oh this one just does so much damage especially yeah. doing some of the late game or post game really tough fights it's like i just need to put out damage like crazy when um, i look at some of the like more <clears throat> intricate parts of the combat i look at the stuff and i'm like oh this is for people who are playing on difficulties above me yes if that makes sense or yeah, do you yeah. want to do the end game uh really difficult combat experiences but for the yeah. main game you kind of you can't really button mash your way through, but you can also kind of keep it simple when it comes to your build. Yeah, it's not a terribly challenging game. Like the main the main playthrough, at least the main yeah. Plot. You can find a challenge if you want one. Definitely, yeah. Which I think is smart of them. Which we'll get to that. Um, there's also tied into the combat. There's also uh, this is a loot game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which I had absolutely no idea about going into. Yeah, um, me neither. I, again, that's another thing. If you had told me that before release, I would have been like, really? It's going to be a, a loot game? Um, there's a lot of stuff in this that's like, oh, it's one of these games, or it's got parts of one of these games in oh, it. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They sort of take, they sort of just sort of skim off the top of those different genres. Like, it's a pretty, There's a. it's a loot game, but it's not like, uh, it's not built around a loot, loot, right? Like it's the no. loot's there, and there's a quite a bit of it, and there's a lot of variety that you can do with different combinations of gems and loot and armor. Or yeah, gems, armor. Be- being honest, I I found it to be slightly unnecessary and excessive to begin with. And yeah, they they sort of so dump it many on you. things, yeah. enchantments, and then you can. I, I haven't played it in like a few weeks, so. I'm forgetting some of the specifics, but I remember there's like different attachments. There's axe pommels. Yeah, pommels there's and talismans. Talismans. And, yeah. And then you can upgrade the sockets for every weapon. And it's just like when you first start, it's like, do I need all this? Is this necessary to have so many different layers of I, RPG yeah. character building? Do I need this? I ended up really liking that that, that it was there. Um, but I definitely agree that f- for the first while, like they... Tying back to the you know the first three to five hours being a little slow, it's slow, and then they all of a sudden just dump everything on you, mm. uh, kind of quickly. Like it suddenly it's opened up. You can do all these side activities. Here's fifteen different types of loot slots now. Here are thirty different crafting items, which is something else we could we'll talk about probably. And I think they rolled it out a little. They could have rolled it out better, I think. Uh, yeah. At first it was of- like, we need to implement an RPG system because that's what games have. Yeah. And here the, it is. The first three hours are like, oh, cinematic. You know, we're a cinematic. Game. And then like at hour five, they're like, no, no, we're a video game. Here are 75 video game mechanics for you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, that's too much. Um, but having not played uh, Monster Hunter World and being someone that likes loot games and not really having anything to do in Destiny, um, <laughs> I really enjoyed the loot. I came to really enjoy it, and I was glad that it was it was there in the end. Even if yeah, even it if I with... think if it wasn't there, it, the game would still be great. Um, oh yeah, it almost becomes like a it becomes more like a pacing mechanism where you're like. Uh, I've just done 30 minutes of combat. I'm going to go to this blacksmith and just kind of fiddle around with a build and upgrade a few little stats. Yeah. And see 
my numbers go up. <laughs> yeah, I I like watching the numbers go up. I'm yeah, not gonna lie, it's not good that I'm so easy to to please with numbers going up, but <laughs> I do enjoy watching the numbers go up. And I hadn't been able to get any numbers up in games since you know the December DLC for Destiny, and yeah. so um, I ended up quite enjoying that stuff, even if. It'll be better in the sequel, I think. You know, like the... Mm -hmm. I, said, I mentioned the crafting materials. Like, there are fucking 75 different crafting things, materials yeah, in this game. Yeah, I didn't really pay attention to them. I just picked up everything. Yeah, and, and it's just too much at, at a certain point. Especially later on, when I was like, I want to get the final upgrade for this piece of armor so I can be, you know, max level, quote-unquote. Uh, and, and it's like, you need one golden Svartalheim scales thing and I'm like I don't know where I'm supposed to get that from mm. uh, and you just sort of have to keep playing until you find it uh, there was just if you if you go they, they have a tab in the menu that, that covers all the crafting materials you have in your inventory and if you scroll through that list it is it's silly how much how many different materials they are there are don't, I don't think I even looked yeah so I think that that stuff could have been dialed back a bit you know just maybe keep it to like one legendary type of material you know and then you can like upgrade the other basic types of materials I don't know but it seems like the different realms all have their own like full set of crafting materials anyways it's 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 not a major thing. It doesn't really get in the way, but it was just sort of a little one aspect of the game that was a little clunky. But yeah. uh, speaking of realms, it's like you mentioned, I'll let you take over. Uh, this is like a hub based semi open world game. Turns out. Yes. Didn't expect which, that either. <laughs> which absolutely shook me. <laughs> yeah, when you me get too. To, what's it called? The Lake of the Nines? Yes. Lake of yeah. the Realms? Lake of the Nines? Yeah. It very slowly unfolds in a way where if you haven't watched any reviews or you just haven't done much research, you would never see it coming. Yeah. I think just on, on the way to a quest, someone just gives you what's called a favor. And then I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be like um, <laughs> like in the Tomb Raider games. We have a hub and you kind of just go off and uh, do little activities and kind of yes, but also yes. more, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. more expensive than that. And I absolutely love, I don't know what to call it, but games like Lost Legacy and the Tomb Raiders have been doing it where they're merging linear cinematic stuff mm -hmm. with chunks of non-linear hub side quest exploration areas in this same format and game. Yeah. And it just does wonders for pacing, especially when you, the player, can choose to be like, you know what, I have just got enough to unlock an entire new realm which I can travel to, optionally, and I can just choose to do that, or I can just go on the main quest line. But it's still... I, it sounds like I'm just describing an, like an open-world RPG, but it's... <laughs> I don't know how to quantify it. But it's something we've seen recently with Sony first-party stuff. And Yeah, and it's, it's just great. <laughs> such a fun way to play the game, but to keep the high-production cinematic linear stuff coming. Yeah, and just before I forget to say it, uh, because you just saying it reminded me, um, I think this game has raised the bar in terms of combining scale, not just like sense of scale in a game, but like literally this is a 50-hour game if you want 100% it. Combining scale with absurd production values mm -hmm. that oh, never, yeah. ever... There is not a single thing in the game that doesn't scream production value uh like there's not a single like weak you know sort of unpolished or poorly executed aspect of the game like i've it, it blows my mind sort of to an extent how big the game is how much stuff there is to do yeah how much like writing there is and the, combine that with the absurd high production values um and like it is to the, the most highly produced <laughs> game of this size ever I oh think. yeah, easily to to an, to a point where it's like, I feel like I'm going to be disappointed if The Last of Us Part Two isn't doing some similar, you know, bigger, larger scale things. Like if, <laughs> like if the Naughty Dog's next game is just 
another 12 hour linear thing like I'm sure it'll be great but I would be disappointed because I feel like and I don't like comparing this to a Naughty Dog product all the time but it's sort of hard not to because it it really does feel like it has that level of production but it's 40 hours long yeah um, it, it, it feels like it's raised the bar on definitely this quite small bubble of extremely highly produced AAA Sony first party titles yeah yeah like it's and nuts. It, it was crazy, yeah. Like, you know, the main story is like 15 to 20 hours, but if you do side stuff, it can be quite a while before you see the end of it. Yeah, but 20 and hours is still long for the production yeah. quality. Yeah. Like, it is up there with, like, Horizon and Last of Us. It's it's the best of the best when it comes to production. It's it's This game is so long for how good it is. It's so yes. long. It's crazy, you know. They and they said like we worked five years on this game, and it shows. Like it really yeah. shows. Uh, it's not a lot of times when you see high quality games of this standard, you expect kind of like um like the format of Horizon, where a bunch of time is spent exploring the environment, and that's where a lot of your playtime goes to. Yeah, but there, you're really not just wandering around locales looking for things and hunting unless you're doing like really end game collectible stuff mm -hmm. for like the base of 30 to 40 hours you're always barreling forward to something new and exciting yeah and they and, and you know what even after you beat the game even after the 30 to 40 hours there are still little things that are new that they've done mm. for after the game like we'll talk about story stuff soon but like there's a, a huge amount of dialogue that is unique to after beating the game. Uh, and just stuff like that, like you don't see that in a lot of games. You know, normally you beat the story and then you do side stuff and there's like no dialogue ever again, right? And, yeah. And that's fine. But this is just like, now nah, we wrote, you know, another 100, 150 dialogue exchanges for after you've beaten the game. And it's like, oh, you didn't need to do that, but uh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like we haven't talked about the, the side activities at all. <laughs> no, sorry. We just kind of gushed so for a little bit. We just gushed. This game is hard to talk about because there's so much in it. Uh, yeah. There, there are side quests, and they're really fucking good as well. Like, the first time you stumble onto a free the dragon quest, and I realized it was optional, it was mental. I couldn't believe the first one. I assume we found the same one, which is when like you, you're going up that kind of chasm and it just charges electricity down it, destroying everything. And it's uh, yeah, and it's like in the little. It's sort of like in a little room, right? Isn't yeah, that the one? yeah. I did. The, I think I did those in a different order than most yeah, people. Okay. But um, yeah, one of the side activities, like there's three of them, and each each of them is tied to like this big, huge area on the map with a story tied to it. And it's sort of like a ruined dwarven stronghold. One of them is, and and there's puzzles and combat and a little mini story told through the environment, and and it's just you know it's just an optional thing. Uh, the optional content doesn't feel optional. No, the quality no. of it doesn't feel like it should have been optional. If I made that as a game designer, I wouldn't have wanted there to even be a chance of people missing it. But, <laughs> yeah. but the fact that it's optional makes it more special because you know that you couldn't you could have missed it. Yeah. If, that makes if you were sense. to just do the main story in this, you'd have a fantastic time. Mm. But you would be missing out on a lot of really cool stuff. Uh that really adds to the whole experience. Yeah, and I think there's like a sense of agency to the side stuff where you are going out and you're collecting like parts of a key which will let you go to a realm and then at no time will the game make you go to the realm you have to just be like you know what i'm gonna go back to the teleporter room and i'm just gonna try this out and see what happens so yeah it's this kind of feeling of you know player choice and you're making this stuff occur and it's just it's really good dude <laughs> and <laughs> and then there's so there's uh, in norse mythology there's the nine realms which we all know from uh you know probably from marvel stuff and uh, there's a travel room in this game, and you're in Midgard, which is basically Earth. And then you have access to uh, four of the nine realms, I think. Um, which, when I saw that map for the first time, I was like, 
are you gonna fucking make me like are did they build nine other realms for me to go to turns out no thank god uh even though i would have happily played another oh, yeah. 30 hours of the game um one of them is pr- two of them are pretty story heavy realms yeah uh, one of them you can't revisit. One of them you have good side content that you can do. Oh no, two of them you can revisit, and they have side stuff in them. And then two of them are fully optional side realms that are like, well, one of them is combat trials. Yeah. And then the other one is a fucking roguelite run based area. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, they're, it's insane. They're so, they're so like when I played those, I was like, "This is great," but it, they're so unnecessary. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you had never made these, it would have still been like a nine out of ten game. Oh yeah. It's just like, why have you given us all this content? <laughs> why do we deserve this? Yeah, exactly. It's nice when you play a game that's like, wow, they really, they really just wanted to go for it all out. Yeah. Uh, and we're allowed to because that seems to be Sony's MO for this gen. It's just like, hey, you want to spend five years making this crazy thing? Go for it. We don't really care. Uh, and it, it even. Just, it feels like they finished the game and then Sony was like, <laughs> oh no, we haven't actually planned to release this till 2018. And they're like, oh shit, we got a year left. Uh, let's just keep the ball rolling. Yeah. Uh, combat trials, roguelike, that'd be interesting. Let's just piece this together. And like I said, you know, nothing in it feels half-assed. Like the combat trials, which I actually did quite a lot of and got everything done there, they're really fun. And they've got like, they've there's variety to them and you do all of them and then they like change and there's new versions of all the trials and there's stuff to unlock from them. And there's, again, like unique dialogue tied to it all. And then... You go to Niflheim, and there's, like, mist everywhere, and you're like, oh, this is another side area. And then you get to a placard, and it says, basically, this is a, a roguelite run-based area. You better get your your mist echoes and then get out before you die. And it's like, wh- what? You've done a, you've done a roguelite thing based <laughs> side content in this fucking God of War game? What are you... What? Okay. And I spent a long time getting all that stuff done there as well, and it's... It's ridiculous. The, the, that one really threw me off because I didn't go there until like 35 hours into the game. Mm-hmm. And when I read that sign and it was like, you know, collect as many as you can in one run, I was like, are you, f- is this for real? They just, they just put this huge extra side thing in. It was so yeah. weird. <laughs> it, it feels like when you stumble upon that stuff, it feels like fan content where like if someone could mod the game, they'd be like, hey, I loved your game. Do you know what would be fun if we tried this? Yeah. But the developers did it themselves. It kind of it feels like they liked their own product a lot and were just having a lot of fun and experimenting. Definitely, yeah. Which is nice. Yeah, they clearly loved the combat and mm. wanted to just put in as much stuff for people to do with those systems as possible, which is really great. And... And that's still only like thirty percent of the side activities in there. Like there's side quests tied to the spirits, and they all have a unique story. And yeah, they weave the side stories into like the environment really nicely. And they they're yeah, tied. The whole, like, the whole island of nines is really well designed. I think people will kind of compare it to Dark Souls designs because it's all kind of interweaving, mm-hmm. layered on top of each other. And lots of secret little areas tucked away where you look at the map and there's just a kind of a foggy area you haven't checked out. You're like, yeah, I'm just going to boat over there and see what happens. And nine times out of ten, you will find something to do. And those side co- those a lot of those side quests really tie into, like, there's a clear uh, uh, authorship to the whole game. Where it's like, these side quests are thematically similar or tied into what the main story is about, which is, like, this yes. weird father-son relationship. And, like, you know, there's the one side quest about the captain and his leadership of his soldiers. And yeah, that ties good. into him teaching his son about them. And, you know, there's they tie everything together uh, really in a way that not a lot of games do. Like, you never get a new gameplay mechanic without a logical story explanation for Mm -hmm. it. You never, 
like nothing ever happens because it feels like they they were just like oh video game here you go it they, yeah, his, they his, let's burn 30 minutes of the player's time by making them go from a to b yeah they they justify everything and explain everything and weave it all together in a way that is really uh really seamless and like everything adds to everything else if that makes any sense uh, yeah like i remember we were talking about assassin's creed origins and i was like mm. i really like the world but they just felt like because they were trying to push ac into an rpg direction they were like okay let's put 59 to 80 side quests yeah all really menial activities and in god of war there's probably like 15 15 maybe yeah. Yeah, and it's maybe. like it's yeah. just enough. It's like ten hours of extra content, maybe a bit more if you count the uh, extra realms, and they're all you can remember all of them. Yes, yeah, absolutely it's, all of them. The, the storytelling and like world building sort of reminds me of The Witcher Three, where it's like every quest serves a purpose to yeah. further the 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 learnings of like your learnings and understandings of the world and and the main characters mm -hmm. and while also still telling a little self-contained side story, which is um, still uncommon in games. You know, like The Witcher 3 is still sort of feels like obviously the king of that because it's such a ridiculously big game. But yeah. to have it in this mega triple A Sony release as side stuff is uh, really neat. Um, should we talk about the main story? <laughs> because that's in there as well. We should probably focus on Atreus when it comes to the main story because the I really like the format of the story it's pretty much you are just trying to get uh, your wife's ashes to the tallest mountain in all the realms kind of a Lord of the Rings-esque adventure and the simple format is good you just go on a little journey there's hurdles and a little journey bumps. that ends up being a really big journey yeah and there's something just a bit childish that I like about an adventure which takes you on uh, lots of different beats in the in the travels to different locations but the overall objective is really simple i think yes. that's what's so good about stuff like lord of the rings and uh, i was gonna say something else but i don't want to say harry it. potter <laughs> <laughs> i just i just think with lord, lord of the rings is such yeah, a, lord of the rings a great is a comparison it's just gotta destroy the ring like everything in all yeah. those movies just or stories just comes down but the to actual one, one goal form of the story is very simple and it's kind mm. of more about the people and the relationships along the way mm -hmm. there's there's a witch called freya there's some evil kind of evil the sons of thor and boulder and a decapitated head called mimir what's his name mimir yes who is and amazing <laughs> yes and it's Forgot more about, about those characters i feel yeah, yeah. and the fun adventures the trepidations and the the building of relationships because i really thought it was just going to be you and atreus which is obviously a large part it's the core of the story but uh, mimir is there for like 60 percent of the game more even yeah i mean yeah. well if you have you know it depends on when you do the side content as well but uh, and they, they kept him really quiet with all the reveal stuff and it was basically yeah. that party that party of three for Pretty much all of it. And th those three make a really great team, a great combination yes. of personalities, which I really, really like. I think without Mimir, that game would sort of fall apart a little bit because it would just be Kratos being an uptight dick and Atreus, you know, and their relationship would certainly, you know, progress and, and loosen <laughs> up a bit. But Mimir really lightens the whole game up and brings it a sense of fun, which it needs. Yeah, and he's also a very clever way of dispersing lore and backstory. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's a really smart addition to the game, and it really yeah. adds to it all, and it's surprisingly funny, the game. Yeah, I, think. Like, I love their boat chats. The boat chats are some of the yeah. best bits. Yeah, and there's like a good sense of deadpan humor from Kratos as well sometimes, where he's like... You know, like if I require your council head, I will ask. And he's like, oh, okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> you know, yeah. and there's a... They, the three of them have a very good... Uh, yeah, they're a very good trio of characters to have in your game. Who are I, there I are constantly... Enjoyed the, I enjoyed the bit of Kratos trying to deliver stories to Atreus. <laughs> But he yeah. just has no idea about timing and detail and just completely butchers all of them. And they're all about just, like, some horrible murder or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's got a good sense of fun to it, uh, which <laughs> is... It definitely needs, because 
those old God of War games are way too self-serious for how stupid they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and speaking of those old games, it's I really also enjoyed the ways in which they are aware of the game, like the game's history, the history of the series, mm. and the way that they sort of play off of the things you expect from the yes. from the series and the ways in which they are also like sort of meditating on the like sins of the past in a way. Yeah, that was I am not a hardcore God of War fan. I've played one and two. I've only actually beaten three and that's all I've played. But reinventing a franchise is a high risk job, especially one that has a hardcore fan base and God of War is one of those. We might not be those people but boy some people love god of war yeah totally it was one of those and sort of childhood games i think yeah know, and, we, and we've, we've seen kind of, of like up. resident evil and zelda do that recently but i think god of war went more off the beaten track of oh, yeah. what god of war used to be than those franchises and it's a spooky scary balance to get that right like you've got to be careful you want to breathe new life into your franchise, but you don't want to stamp on the memory of what you built. And they did a very good job of it. Yeah, like it very feels like job. a completely new thing, obviously. Yes. Uh, and it is, in most ways, completely... Like it is, in most ways, a complete reboot of the series. Mm -hmm. But they don't sever the ties to those old games. And the ways they reference Kratos' history and the Greek mythology stuff uh, are some of my favorite parts of the game, honestly. Yeah, they're so and I don't infrequent care about that those old games. <laughs> you can sometimes forget about the whole yeah. previous games being <laughs> canon, and then like a little reference will come in with like the, the sign of Olympus. You're like, oh shit, yeah, I forgot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about those. Christ, I forgot I'm playing this franchise. Those are the moments, uh, those censored moments that I have just edited out. Those are the moments that make me wish... I was one of those people that really loved the God of War games, you know, because th those are the moments that are rare in games. Like when you mm. return to Rapture in Bioshock Infinite, where yeah. it's like, oh, this is a really, really awesome thing as a fan of the series. Yeah, and it's like also just a good moment. Like profound and weird to be, yeah. to be a part of. Yeah, and uh, they do a really good job with that. And then and the main story is pretty compelling, yeah. <laughs> I would say. Like, it's... It gets very grand at times, but never feels, like you said, it always feels like the end goal is still just very simple. It's and a good, it's a damn good adventure. There's yeah. lots of locales, lots of characters, and it moves at such a good, good pace. Yeah, for like I would say the one major criticism I have of the story is that there's too much of oh, we are almost there, oh, we need one more MacGuffin thing to go get. You know, we have to go get one this other thing. All right, <laughs> we've got the thing. Oh, we also need this thing. Thankfully, though, like, normally that would bother me quite a bit, and just sort of leaning back and looking at it, it's it's a flaw. But I was so happy to keep playing the game. <laughs> yeah, I felt that but, when you had to get Mamiya's second eye, when you yeah, go to that it, specific place, and it yeah. kind of, you just get the thing, and then it's over. And I was like, ah, they just wanted you to see this location, which was very cool. Yes, yeah. And it's sort of like, it's sort of a, I'm sort of split on it where it's like, ah, this is like sort of objectively flawed, but I'm so, so enjoying myself and like, oh, this is a cool location. It, it never bothered me, but it was sort of, a, you know, that could have been probably, that could have been better, but uh, it didn't get in the way of me enjoying it at any point. And uh, we haven't really talked about the, the locations, like, yeah, I was just going to say the spectacle. Spoiler free. But man, yeah. there's some amazing Ooh. environments. God yeah. damn. They, the game handles scale in a way that not a lot of games I've played have, where you yeah. they there are some really big things that happen, like just big creatures, you know, giants, and the, the world serpent are obviously a core part of Norse mythology. And uh, God, the world serpent never gets boring to look at. It's always no. epic. Yeah. And the end boss fight is very, very exciting. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that that whole location that you encounter when you encounter it way earlier. Um, oh, so good. To get the chisel is one of the night and like neatest looking things oh, I've seen in a game. They're in a long so time. clever because like in the map you can just see yeah. one of the parts of that environment. You like what the and hell you is can this? see it from other parts of the world in the actual oh, could you? game. Yeah, like I noticed uh, you can see it from the summit. 
mm. from the mountain. You can see the the hammer, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that that stuff was really God, it's so good. Really good, yeah, and. Um, yeah, I was going to go a little bit off topic and just say that I was quite surprised that they didn't bring boss fights into the rotation that often. There are boss fights in mm. the game, but it's a huge core component of the original games. It's pretty. It's not. It's not a boss, boss rush games, but there's like ten plus bosses. In God of War Three, game. you kill a lot of gods. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, there's only a few like bosses, especially large four? scale bosses. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, the boss fights bad. though. Yeah, they're um, really good. I don't like boss fights in game either, and I liked all the boss fights here. They they're mechanically interesting enough. They're not too challenging, but still, you know, they sort of make you feel like you might lose, but then you don't. You, yeah. I never refit. I or I never had to restart any of them. And it might have been part of, them, of the balance of making it feel new and not too much like the old games. Because when yeah. you do take down the big unnamed boss which is like in the middle that was maybe the most god of war looking thing in the entire game like when you do the fatality and like this looks oh, yeah. like the old god of war games yes so maybe that's why they held back on it well and it's that. a small like we've said it's a smaller scale story and so True. the 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 bosses you fight are just the one like obstacles that get in the way and yeah. It's not like the old games where the That's entire true. series is about, I want to wipe out the entire pantheon of Greek gods. Yeah, he's not seeking uh, them out. Yeah. I, I suspect there'll be a lot more, maybe not a lot more, but there'll definitely be some gods getting killed uh, <laughs> in the sequels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think um, in the story there was only one part I didn't like, and that's mm. where Atreus turns into like a little shit for a while. Yeah, and, and which, which I was is fine talk about that. because yes. I'm like I think Atreus is actually quite a good character and he is. and yeah. does feel like a genuine kid, but yes. he just yeah. he he turns into a shithead, which I was like, I just thought it was a tiny bit mishandled that bit. There's a bit like whenever you're doing a command, he just goes whatever. And it's like yeah. uh, he it feels like a bit honed in as an annoying yes. kid writing, and then like one level later, he's just not a shithead anymore. Yeah, that whole like it happens. The turn happens too quickly. I understand yeah. the turn, and I can yeah, definitely sense. see it happening over a longer period of time. Yeah. But it happens too quickly, and he goes too hard in the wrong direction. And then, like, yeah, like an hour later, he's just back to normal. And they don't really... I don't really understand why he just switched back, like, got out of that. Um, maybe I missed a line of dialogue or something. But there was it, that, something weird at the end where he didn't remember doing some of the stuff. Yeah. Which they didn't. Maybe it'll make more sense in the sequels. I Maybe. don't know, but Maybe. that that I I'm glad you mentioned it because that it was one of the things that I was going to mention as well. It's just mm -hmm. it's it's short lived and pretty easy to forgive, uh, but it was a little like eh, this is a bit I don't know rough or corny or or it, it just felt a little rushed. Yes, that was the only yeah. part of the game that felt a little rushed. Uh, yeah. Maybe it was a late addition to the story. I don't yeah. Know. Uh, but when it comes to compl complaints, I don't really have any. It's got a really this, nice like gameplay loop. There's puzzles. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like Zelda Dungeon-esque, where you've got little puzzle room, little platforming room, combat room. This game is very easy to play for like 10 hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very I don't... Easy. It's, I find it hard for me to stay engaged with a game for more than like two hours at a time, but I was... I played a lot of God of War in the first week that it was out. Like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, probably you, you ten hours in ahead. one or two days. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know what? When it was over, when I had hundred percent of the game, I I think I said it to Andy in the chat. I was like, if the sequel came out tomorrow, I would, I would devour it. Yes, uh, which absolutely. Is uncommon for for games for me where it's like, I just spent fifty hours with this. Um, I feel totally satisfied, but I would play another 50 hours of a new thing immediately. And um, that's hard to do. Um, you know, yeah. they, they, they set up sequel stuff in, like, they set up a lot of really exciting sequel stuff without making it feel um, self contained. Like, the story is, you know, the, the story they told in the first game is told, and they, they conclude it. And, and if they didn't make sequels, that would be fine. Uh, obviously, <clears> they're going to. But if they didn't, it wouldn't feel unsatisfying. Um, but setting up a sequel in a way that feels satisfying but also exciting for the future is hard to do, I think. And um, 
but yeah, when it was over, I was like, man, I can't wait for them to make two and three of this yeah, series man. because it's going to be cool. <laughs> I can't, I can't wait. I actually can't wait. Yeah. But I, I think, uh, unless you've got any sp- specific bullet points, I think th- there's a lot to cover, and I think we've been pretty thorough. I think we've got through most of yeah. the game. It looks great as well. I oh, it looks, it looks amazing. I mean, it's yeah. a Sony first-party title. Like, they, they have... They always look good, obviously. God, like um, the first time you're in the uh, the traveling room and like all the mm, blue shit starts flying past you, I was like, Jesus Christ! Amazing particle good. effects in oh, this game and God, killer so use of HDR on a on a PS4 Pro on an Oof. OLED. Like, woo, it looks good. I think I have one more random bullet point is it's surprisingly reserved with like the hyper violence. Yeah, it's really not that gory. It, it, there are moments where there's some really graphic stuff, but it's not as frequent as it doesn't feel like glorified or like yeah. a novelty. Not like the old games were, that's for sure. And there's so, uh, oh also, god, there's so many good music. Points. Oh god, I feel like I could bullet point about this game for the next hour. That's true. It's yeah. so vast and big, and everything is so high quality. This is yeah. the most high quality video game product that's ever been made. I'm gonna say that. You can argue about how it stands in best games of all time and all that garbage, but it's maybe the it is the high highest quality product in a video game package I think has ever ever been put together. Yeah, I, I would probably agree. Like the it's so large like and ambitious. A there's scope so many, and quality oh. combo that is pretty pretty hard to beat in games. Uh, yeah, and I, it's definitely the most I've enjoyed a game this year, and I I really don't expect it to be topped. Um, for me at least just and a lot of that is due to the surprise of it and yeah. um, and I would say I, there are things that I like about it more than even something like Horizon mm-hmm. uh, maybe not as a, as a whole or maybe as a whole I don't know but it's it's a Oof. fucking really good video game I feel uh, so loyal to Horizon that I don't <laughs> even want to start thinking if I like it more than Horizon because I'm scared I'll say yes and I don't want yeah, to I say would, yes I, I, I would echo those I don't statements. want to say yes <laughs> yeah because yeah. I love Horizon so much yeah and but also like like I said with Horizon, I'm excited to see the sequel because there are like a couple of little things that they'll hone and make better. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be pretty exciting. So That's the best thing is when a new IP launches. I guess you can't really call God of War a new IP, but you know what I'm no, saying. No, but you know. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's astonishingly good. It, it makes you excited for the future, which is awesome. But I think we could probably, we could probably bullet point about, about God of War for the next day so we're gonna have to try and surmise our feelings and i I think i I kind of summarized my feelings so i'm gonna let you have the last words uh it's it's a very good game (laughs) maybe the best of the year uh one of the better ones maybe i don't know yeah one of the better ones ever maybe one of the better (laughs) of this generation for sure i would i would agree with those statements uh and yeah, like you said, uh, like staggering, kind of mind-boggling how big it is and how consistent the quality is. Yeah, uh, I remember when I had played like the first reasonable chunk, like seven to eight hours, and I told you where I where I was, and you were like, "Ah, oh, you're at the very beginning." And I almost <laughs> yeah, you were like, myself. you're like just dispelling the smoke, right? I think yes. Is, and, and that's an interesting part because it, it like feels like you're about to end the game, but the mm-hmm. reality is you're like. 15 or 20 percent in like you, it's, you, it's massive. that's like the end of the prologue basically yeah, it's so big <laughs> yeah uh, God. what a pleasure what a pleasure what a, what a surprise as well oh, i think we God, knew yeah. it was going to yeah, be yeah. high quality but we didn't know what form it was going to take definitely and it was better yeah. than i expected in pretty much every way yeah i would agree yeah it's it's a console seller yeah you should probably have a ps4 by now well right the next talking point should be relatively quick. Yeah, I would, on I the would topic think. of hyperviolence, Nintendo Labo. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, Nintendo Labo. I will say that when Nintendo Labo was announced, I was really uh, excited about it, which sounds I really might have stupid. laughed initially. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh. well, the first instinct is they're selling cardboard 
<laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. And then the more I looked at it and the way that you build it and it interacts with the Switch, I was like, this is really, really clever. From a yeah. business perspective, they're selling cardboard and to children I mean, as well, which is like brilliant. a really like, good market for craft. Like Lego does well still. Oh my, yeah! Oh my God! Yeah, Lego is massive. And I'm like, this like, is gonna you... cost them like five bucks to make. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fucking guy that came up with this idea of let's sell cardboard to children. We'll sell it for ninety dollars. <laughs> It'll cost us three cents to make. He got. Yeah. He's probably that was. He's probably the president now. That was probably him that got promoted <laughs> last month. Like. Brilliant. Genius. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but also, another reason I like it is I've always liked Nintendo because while in gaming we have uh, we have like the Sony and the Xbox and PC gaming and it's all kind of black and white where it's just shooting games and it's a fidelity battle of graphics and technology. And then there's just these weirdos over in Japan just making quirky, interesting stuff that no one even asked for. But they just no. make it, and they put it out, and I'm like, they are like the old Apple of video games, yeah. where you just don't know what they're going to make next. And I remember I got into Nintendo pretty late, I didn't have anything uh, until the Wii, but the Wii was fascinating. Um, then they made a Nintendo DS, which was 3D without any glasses, which I still don't understand how it works, my sister yeah. has it. I don't know, I, I look at it, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> and then the Switch was... Really, really clever technology. I love the Switch. And then they just I, I just like companies that m experiment in an industry yeah. which doesn't really promote experimentation. Totally. And what a weird and stupid idea. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, good lord. Uh, what a weird idea. This is why I like Nintendo. We need yeah. someone out there making interesting things. And I knew the second I saw this, I was going to buy it because not only do I like games, but I just like weird new tech things. Even if it ended up being a bit of a waste of time and it was garbage <laughs> and I hated it, I knew it was something that I had to at least try. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so Labo, I don't know why we're reviewing it because it's not a game at all. Well, um, we, we like to do roundups, so we didn't right, want to just do right. God of War because we're yeah, not right. a proper review people. We just do <laughs> weird podcasts every now and then. Um... It's a product. It's not a video game. Um, it, it comes with a video game, so it's valid. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And um, so the Labo stuff is... Uh, I can summarize it pretty quickly. I think it is a fantastic and fascinating engineering feat. Oh, yeah. And I enjoyed building them. I haven't built much. I built the, the first the race car and I built the piano. And mm -hmm. I enjoyed building it. It's kind of relaxing. Yeah. Uh, the instructions are way too slow, but I They're very it's clear relaxing. Though. Yeah. Foolproof. And and slick, you know, slickly presented. Um yeah. foolproof is a good word. Yeah. Um but what and, and I enjoy so I enjoyed building it. I think the ways, you know, like the precision of the the way the cardboard is cut and it all folds together is endlessly satisfying. Yeah, really sturdy. And then the, the technology of how it works with the uh, the little infrared camera and the IR like strips that you put onto things. You know, I understand how the piano functions, and it's a it's a really it's just a really smart use of the switch technology. Mm -hmm. And I have endless appreciation for it from us from an engineering point of view. Really. Yeah. But it is kind of useless. <laughs> yes. I think for, for anyone over the age of like 15, it's a very novelty-based product. I bought it for the magic because I heard there were some strange interactions that I didn't know was possible because I didn't really know what tech was hidden in the Switch. And that was very There's exciting. There's a camera pointed at your crotch all the time that you're yeah. using the Switch in handheld mode. What the there's, hell? They didn't th tell there's us. There's a camera. They've hidden a yeah. camera in there. And that was a very exciting reveal. When you just build <laughs> yeah. like the tiny RC car and it can see you. And it's like, what the yeah. hell? I clicked that button and I like, I saw my, my arm or something. And I was like, ah, it, it was like all green and horrible. And <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. It, but it's, the building is really therapeutic and fun. Yeah. You kind of see the product, and you're like, how is this going to come together? And then you just start putting the, the cardboard, and then you're like, wait, is this going to... Oh, wait, you snap it together, and you're like, oh! 
Oh, there's some fun eureka moments where it all starts to all starts to come together. And then the technology stuff is surprisingly clever. Like I didn't know they had any of the um you, not UV, uh, you... IR? I think I, it's IR. The IR. Infrared. I think it's IR, yeah. I didn't know about any of that tech, so when I was putting the stickers on the house, I'm like, is, is this decorative? What are these stickers for? <laughs> and then yeah. you realize they're like little reflective things so the camera can see like what button is in the house. And it feels yeah. a bit like magic when it comes together and you're pushing on a piece of cardboard and it's making yeah. your Nintendo Switch do something on the screen. And that's Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think... Honestly, I, I I don't really know who the who this la this stuff is for because if you're between the ages of five and twelve, mm -hmm. I, I could maybe see it, but like not the piano because that that took like four hours to build. <laughs> yeah, it's quite difficult. And and you know like the the racing one and the fishing one and the the big robot kit which we don't have like those I can understand for like a five year old or something, um, but then like the piano like I wouldn't want that if I was eight. But mind you, I don't know what the what the eight year olds want anymore. No, I have um, no idea. But it like and it it wasn't easy. Well, it, it, it's it's easy to build, but it's involved. Like it's yes, multiple hours to build some of these things. The and house I haven't built the piano, but the house was pretty intricate. There's these buttons. And really, the pieces are very huh. small, and I managed and to not snap anything. But I imagine if a kid breaks something, like on the yeah, fisher yeah. the fishing rod, there's the circles which the the thread goes through, and I'm like, Oof, right, I've bent this horribly, and I I almost broke it. And if you break it. <laughs> Uh, you better find some strong glue because you need it. Yeah. Well, you can print the uh, blueprints and then cut cut them onto your own cardboard. Um, yeah, I, I did, which I is really think cool. About that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, but like, I, I think the the thing that it seems most, or the thing that I've seen that's been most interesting out of it is looking up all the neat stuff people are doing with like the piano. You know, just mm. playing music on it and. But like I, I and I haven't gone looking, and I, I do want to go and look because I, I, to my knowledge, there it is quite capable. Um, there is some sort of light programming thing in yeah. the Switch application or in the Labo application. You can make your own creations and program yeah. them. I've seen people making um, some fun things like vending machines, etc. That's that's awesome, and so I think that is probably the most the the only truly interesting application that will come out of Labo is me going online and looking at all the neat things people have made with cardboard and a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I appreciate it a lot and I enjoy building it and I think it's a great fun blend of technology and something so simple as cardboard. And like the piano works. Like I can, you know, I can yeah. play basic things on it, it with one well. hand. The motorbike one yeah. works as a little arcade joystick thing. You know, you scanned your face into a racetrack <laughs> and that was hilarious. I loved it. And you know, you did that once and you're like, that's the funniest thing that's happened in a long time. <laughs> Next, you know, like, uh, yeah. so it, it's, I, I'm glad they did it. It's one of those things where it's like this, Maybe they'll do more with it in the future. Maybe, maybe there's a huge Labo scene, you know, out there on the internet. I'm sure there is. There's probably I mean, Labo yeah. build jam sessions or something. I don't there's know. There's going to be a few more packs coming out in the future, obviously. That's what, yeah, expand. that's what it seems like. But I was hoping that there would be like some fun, I don't know, some yeah, fun the games, games. The games aren't great. The games are not like, great. They're mini games, and I, I haven't built any of them that actually have mini games. So I've only seen yours, you know, the race car and the fishing one, mm -hmm. um, or the motorbike and the fishing one. And it's like, okay, that that's fun for like five minutes, you know. They're not really games. It's more like look, it works type experiences. Yeah. yeah and so I was hoping that there would be some sort of gamey thing built around it. Like I was hoping, you know, you could do something with the piano. I, I yeah. could easily see them. A little Nintendo, rhythm game or something like that? Yeah, a rhythm game or something like that. Um, and so when I built the piano and it's just like, here's a keyboard on the screen and there's like, you know, faces on the keys and they, they like sort of pop out at you and I'm like, that's it? <laughs> there's no game here? Mm. Uh, I was a bit disappointed and annoyed, but uh, that's yeah. okay. It doesn't bother me. Like it's just... It, 
I, I, I knew what I was getting myself into. I really miss being able to just like craft simple things. I've always enjoyed Lego, but it's always so expensive. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, yes, I can be, be my childish self and follow simple instructions and build something <laughs> and get some fun out of that. And that was it. Yeah, that is, that's pretty much it. And I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to build any more of them. I might, I don't know. But like, if I build finish. them all, then it's like, how do I, where do I, what do I do with these? Like, do I <laughs> yeah, I'm put them in like a mine. big, a big box and then put that in the closet somewhere? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Neat. It's uh yeah, it, it's a neat experiment. And, and I think they're going to be some really creative, smart people out there making fun, fun stuff with it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely sitting in a weird area where it's like, is it for kids or is it for geniuses <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? I, yeah I, I don't really know that's yeah i'm not entirely sure who it's for um no. but hey it's okay if you know what you're getting yourself into then you can't really complain yeah and you know it's 80 bucks or something i think that's fine like i mean yeah you're paying 80 dollars for cardboard yeah you do you do get a little game which comes with the instructions the interactions and the programming thing yeah but like there's if you were to build all those and then it, dig into and enjoy the the sort of programming and self-creation aspects of it mm. there seems like a lot of of time you could put into it but yeah. um you know for a regular consumer i would say it's kind of not worth it like no it, not really it's if you could go to like a best buy and see the cardboard like on a like at the cardboard piano on a stand and be able to look inside it and see and understand how it works you would be like wow that's really neat yes oh yeah. moving on <laughs> and then you'd walk on walk to the next section of the store <laughs> yeah but what, what they um, do with the cardboard's really impressive like there's yeah. even sound effect not like modules there's like a piece of cardboard that will go in a specific place to make a crank sound yeah, when you, when you turn something, it's really, really well done. Yeah, it is definitely there is a, a certain sort of magic to it that's really <laughs> cool, um, and I think it's great that they did it. Um, should they have done it? Did they need to do it? Oh no, that's a bigger question. That the answer is probably no. That's why I um, like Nintendo. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So making the things no one asked for. Yeah. <laughs> Cardboard man. Cardboard. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't buy the cardboard, I guess. Or if if you want to build a piano out of cardboard and play that, you can yeah, do that Yeah, build too. it if you like building. Yeah, so it was fun it to build. Like it's building. relaxing and, and pleasant. And yeah, uh, and yeah it, it's pretty satisfying snapping everything together and being like, oh, I suddenly have a piano. I didn't like building the nine keys or whatever for the piano, though. That was... Oh, that was I've little, got that coming up. That was a little repetitive. I'm not going to yeah. lie. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a I thing. Th <laughs> yeah, I think that, that pretty much wraps it up. Yeah. Yeah, that, so, was, that was our talk of God of War and Nintendo Labo. Quite, quite the partners in crime for a video discussion. <laughs> they both released on 420 as well. <laughs> yeah. Ah! <laughs> uh, yeah. And also, our copy was provided to us by Sony. I was just thinking, what is next? When will our next... Detroit. Oh, so, not, that comes out on Friday. Okay, we can't do a standalone review for no, Detroit, no, though. No. no one cares about that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't know. We might not have another review roundup until, like, mid-October? I, I don't know unless, what's coming Unless out. we play State of the K2, but I don't know if I even <sighs> want to play that game. I booted it up and then encountered bugs and had to restart and it didn't save and I don't know if I'm going to re... I, I don't, I don't. Mm. We'll see. We'll yeah, see. I suppose you could potentially do... But, like, we're not going to get to Detroit and we're not going to finish that for ages. Yeah. And um, we might... Maybe we'll do, like, a... I think we did a summer review roundup last year and we'll maybe do that. Cover a couple games. Do it, like, later in August or something. Okay. <laughs> it might be a while. Uh, this has sort of been a weird year for releases. I feel like... There was nothing, and then there was everything, and then there was quiet again, and then God of War came out, and now it's, like, deserted again for yeah. months, so... Yeah, so not sure when the next one of these will be out. Yeah. But until then, thank you guys very much for listening, and we will be back in a few months.
to talk about whatever has been released, which I'm sure will be fantastic. Uh, God of War to Detroit, it's going to be a flawless fuck. transition. <laughs> no, I don't want you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.